Hello, it's Tom, Shirt Hunter. As you can see from the title of this video, it's not a video that I thought would ever, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> uh, get to light. Um, months and months to decide whether to actually do it. I uh, wrote some stuff down uh, to try and keep um, what I want to say in there, if you know what I mean. I want to make sure I don't miss, miss anything. Um, yeah, it's incredibly hard. Um, I think the, um, and this is being uncut by the way, so if there's any, I'm not editing this, it should be one take. Um, I think that's the best way to do it. Um, and this isn't just for camera, it's really hard. Um, it was months and months where to film it, and the reason that I'm probably filming it, um, which I'll come to, the reasons why is it's more closure. I thought if I put it out there, then that can close that chapter, and it's just gone, gone forever. Right, um, Ooh. So me and my life and living with a gambling addiction. In the previous video you can see that um, when I was in um, Belgium that I went to a football game and anxiety kicked in. I mean this everything kind of intertwines into the reasons why that why and it comes into one thing and it's the reason probably why it didn't help. So um, going back I mean I think banks um, not that they're an issue with the gambling, but when you're like 18 and you've got no credit history and they go, um, is £300 overdraft max out? Is a free grand overdraft when you've got no credit history is mental. Um, so this is people that are my friends and obviously people that subscribe to the channel or watch it as well. Um, never really spoke out to them personally about it, but obviously it's not going to be any a great surprise that um, I had this addiction. Um, I say had because we come to the end of we think we've kind of re reached the close of it and this is the closure of that chapter in my life which has been which has taken over my life for the last 20 nearly 20 years so 18 20 years so um fruit machines was kind of the introduction into uh, gambling working in a pub as well when I was younger and I just got addicted to them um you know nights out absent on night out um, on nights out just putting money in money and money and money and money and just to get the jackpot just to get that high of winning it even though say the jackpot's 100 and you've put 200 in kind of getting that hit i don't know of winning i don't know um but that was kind of where it all started um with with gambling um so it is just it's just hard it's not for camera it really isn't just so hard um so, and fruit machines, um, as soon as online gambling became a thing properly, well, actually, no, actually, Bucky Shops, I know they've changed the, like, um, roulette machines in the in Bucky's now, I think they're right down to, so you can't really lose your life on it and lose all your money on them. Um, yeah, that was that was big, just, just putting money in constantly for... Roulette machines. Um, so that was kind of just them as soon as I got online gambling. Um, never really been sports bet, and even though there has been some reasonably big sports bets, it's not really been the main issue. Um, it's been, it was just casino, I just, just actually engulfed my life. Um, but casino betting, um, blackjack, you know. Um, obviously, lost a lot of money and I mean you see I think Ellis Platten he's obviously struggled with addiction and gambling who lost a hell of a lot of money um I'm not well probably actually might be the same that but the bets that I put on you know when you put a thousand pound on a hand of blackjack um you know you know it hurts to think about doing that now um it does um Phone's getting launched across the bedroom bedroom after losing. And I've oh, like a wrenching feeling like after doing it, the realisation of doing it, but then the next day continuing to do that. I mean, it really matched my mind. Um, lateral thinking, any type of thinking, because all you could think about was that. And that's so you kind of living this life here and still trying to live your normal life here with this constantly going through your mind um, of gambling, betting, when can I do it, when can I do it, when can I do it? 
I couldn't really, oh, my mind. That's probably, the, the, I think gambling has really affected the, my thinking and that's brought on anxiety and other things because I'm not the same person that I was while I was gambling. Um, and it's kind of living with the after effects of that friendships, as people may watch us, that have dwindled. Not because of the gambling, to be you, I have more friends doing while they're gambling. It's because after it, my mind's gone and I've just shut myself off a little bit um, because of it. Because um, I was a different person when I was gambling. Um, life and soul on the party. Because I kind of had to put that persona on because of what I was doing. Um, so, and then living with the after effects of this is probably I've ruined a lot of relationships with friends. Because um, I'm struggling to, up to a few months, well, the last three, two or three months, I've been struggling to live with it. Um, the after effects of gambling, this is not, not while I was doing it. So, yeah, and obviously, whilst going gambling, obviously the effects on family as well, which is the most gut-wrenching thing, because um, they had to bail me out time and time and time again. That's what is what's weird about it, is that what you're doing to other people, but you still carry on doing it. And that's one thing that probably ever, will always stay with me, is that You know, you just can't stop. I think gambling, especially more years ago than it is now, that it's the taboo addiction. Some people don't see it as an addiction. Some see other people as just seeing, you know, just someone who likes betting, chucking money in it. It's not. It's not addiction. It's not smoking. It's not um, alcohol, uh, drugs. It's not smoking, but alcohol, drugs, um, because it's 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 a real it's a real sign that you're on drugs, you're on alcohol. Um, hiding gambling is, I suppose, easier to a certain extent. So I'm not sure there is, as, initially, there was as much support for people that were, for gambling addiction, there was for people with drugs and alcohol, there's programs, etc., etc., for people dealing with drugs and alcohol, because it's obviously a horrible, horrible thing as well to go through with addiction. It's all, for, for me, falls under addiction, um, regardless if it's gambling, drugs or alcohol. Um, the support I don't think was there. I think it was taboo, and it's like, come on, stop, just stop doing it. Um, more and more that I thought it is, you know, now I fall back. It's a, it's, it's just a horrible, horrible addiction gambling. What it does to you, the after effects of it. Like I said, it just engulfs you. Um, my mind not clear. I haven't been able to think clearly in eighteen years, twenty years, like rationally think about things. Um, because imagine. Doing, do that and getting bailed like, yeah, I won't do it again, I won't do it again. And then doing it again. And then the hurt that causes other people. It's just, normal people just go, well, just stop doing that because look what look at the effect it's having. And I just literally couldn't. I mean, there's, there's a, an example of, uh, I was at a football match down south um, in the pub before the game. And, of course, we're gambling. We're on the fruit machine. And... We haven't gone to the game yet, and I've spent everything, so I can't actually physically get into the game. I drove down, so I know we can get back. I've got fuel, I can get home. And I've spent everything, and I can't even get entry into the football match. So I've had to text my, she, yeah, my wife, and go, oh, can you just lend us this, or just the card's not working. So we made up an excuse, and then I've had to go to a cash machine and get that money out. So imagine knowing that what you're doing, you can't get into what you've come for. You can't get into the game. So why are you doing it? And the reason why is never found the answer to. Um, you know, and it's the, you know the secret secretiveness. I think that's a word. Um, that's what's affected my life for years and years and years. I've not tried to be, but obviously being secretive and gambling, it's highly secretive. If you like, you want to keep it here. But then that's a knock on your face, you for about this, you could about that, but you're not trying to be. It's because that's all I've known for like 18 years. That way of thinking is all I've ever known. And it's so hard to come out of that. And still now it's still hard to come out of that. I'm not doing it on purpose. It's default setting is to be secretive. And 
Um, I'm hoping that speaking out about this will maybe help other people and I'm happy to speak to other people because um, over a year now, not been betting. Um, obviously did all the game stops, but also had a, probably a year. It's like, you know, when you have alcohol and drugs, you don't just, well, some people probably just stop, but maybe wean yourself off and off and off. I uh, still have bets with mates who did bets for me. We did football betting, which is never a problem. Still spending too much, but not like that out of control feeling that you get. Um, so I kind of wean myself off it, uh, if you can call it that. I'm not sure that's even a term, is it? Um, but then I thought, I have to stop this at all. Just even, you know, doing a friendly bet with an accumulator with a mate, I've got to stop it. Um, and it's over a year now. And I don't know if other people with addictions can help me with this, with more drugs and alcohol, but does your mark Honestly, it's like a, something went off a few months ago. So, yeah, after about nine, ten months, honestly, it's it's weird to say. It's like everything becomes clear. It's because I think everything's just in my brain's repaired itself. I don't know if that's a thing, but my thinking and you know decision making um, is more clear and concise. And I mean, it's like honestly, a light switch went off one day, but because of maybe I've been healing all that time. And it's fantastic to start feeling, but looking back is horrendous now that it's clear. It's, you know, it's it's like a light bulb's gone off in my head. Um, yeah, because I'm getting out, like I put here, getting over addiction, if I can call it that. I don't think I'm ever going to get over it. Um, it's dealing with it. Excuse me. Like I said, it's dealing with it, and I'm not saying this for effect. Honestly, it's just like something's gone, whoa. Because maybe I'm minding clearing it up, clearing it up and repairing itself. Because it's like living double lives. It's It was tiring, relentless, horrible. Um, Let's have a look, where are we? Yeah, it's like I said, it was something that consumed my mind for for just for a long, long time, just consumed it. I mean, I mean, a lot of people watching this that are friends will probably know, well, yeah, Tom did have a gun, but it's clear that he did. Um, but I mean, it's more of a taboo thing than it was, you know, like 15 years ago and up until the last few years, and maybe it still is that. And some people probably will think that it's just easy to stop um, when it clearly wasn't. And it's hard to admit that you had an addiction, it really is. I think admitting it is the hardest part. Because it was my life, so that's why I've called it me, my life, and living with gambling, because it was my life. I had my life here, but then this other life was just taking it all over. Um, and I think that's brought on, like I said, my last video, I probably had bits of, you know, ADHD and anxiety, and I've, I've got impulsive behaviour. I'm not sure. It's, not, it's, it's obviously a term. I'm not sure what the actual thing is for it. Maybe ADHD is part of impulsive behaviour. Um, but the anxiety thing that, like I mentioned in my last, well, I think it was my last video too, when I was in Belgium, and I couldn't get that football match. I think because of that, it's brought it on, brought on the anxiety much worse than I probably always had it. The gambling. Now it's now I'm clear in my gambling in my mind that anxiety is kicking. All these other things are kicking in, so it's affecting my relationship with friends. Like I'm struggling to do things that I usually do, things that I've done in the past. Um, still struggling with that to come to terms with, you know, just going out to places, um, like to pubs, and there's a lot of people there. Maybe that's phew, bing bing bing. And I never used to really be like that. I never really liked it, but now it's like. Alarm bells, I have to get out of places. Um, and I, it's kind of weird that, say if I want to do something, go out, I not plan where I want to go, but I know if I go certain types of places that they're going to be quiet. They kind of, I kind of deal with it in my mind before I go. I kind of have a plan before I go out. If I go there, I know it's going to be all right. If I go off that, then my mind starts going, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, and yeah, no, it's, but hopefully with time, friends, I'm sorry, um, they've not been there, I've been out and, kind of just done what I wanted to do. It's not really been the, what I wanted to do. It's kind of what I've tried to do to keep myself a bit sane. Um, and like I said at the start, the reason mainly for it is closure. 
I thought doing this video will close that chapter in my life and I think this is my closure for it. That's the, that's the, one of the reasons why I've done it. Because um, I don't have to carry this burden anymore. I was saying I have a gambling addiction. Now saying it out loud and putting it on the internet is phew, scary for me to do. But now I've done it, I just hope it closes it forever now because like I said, I do feel a lot better and can think a lot clearer. I'm trying to be a better person, a better son, a better husband and a better dad. Because everyone's had the full force of my actions and had to deal with it as well. Which when you have an addiction, it's you kind of don't think of other people, which is horrible because you can't think of other people because your mind is so full and so engulfed with when's your next bet, when are you going to do this? You, you can't wait to do that and get that rush, even though you're losing money, 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 money and losing it all the time. It's that rush, even when you lose. But... You know, still crying, crying myself to sleep a lot of nights because it's learning to live with it. And now you can think a lot clearer. You can see the effect it has on other people. Well, thinking back now, I can see, you know, like it's like looking up from above what I've done and then what that actions would have had on others. And all I can say is, I'm sorry. I don't believe I'm a bad person. But done bad things to be to have it to be gambling things I'm never not proud of, but things I had to do to do it because in my head I had to gamble, I had to gamble, I had to gamble to do it, and that was by any means possible. So you know, and that's private through you know them things. But what well, I say, they there was payday loans. I mean, the fucking horrible bastards that they are. But that was years ago. They're gone now. Um, I think some stuff isn't repairable with friends and family, but with time, maybe it will be. Um, when I was at high school, I was always a biggish lad. But I could still play football up until, what, 18, 19? It was a bit longer. I could still play football. Still a big lad, but I need to lose a little bit of weight when I was that age. Um, but, and that's because of, See, it's hard to blame your weight problem on that. Everyone thinks, oh, you just... The perception of people being overweight is like, look at that, Pastor, look at him, look at that, without knowing anything. So, because of my addiction, everything's had a knock-on effect with my life. I know, how could you be on a diet or eat healthy when all you can think about is gambling, gambling, gambling? You just eat what you can. And then it's kind of a vicious circle because, like, you're that upset with stuff and the way it's going, you're like, well, just eat now. Um, so... I think my weight issues, I've got a hundred times worse because of it. Maybe I'm trying to make an excuse, but I, I, in my mind, I don't think I am. Um, I always need to lose a little bit of weight, but now I need to lose a hell of a lot of weight because of it. And we're back on that because we get clearer. I wanted to start, started this week, wanted to start doing it. I've lost five stone before and it went back on because I still hadn't dealt with my demons. Um, so I hadn't dealt with that. So everything just went back on. I kind of got to lose that weight and I went, well, what next? You know, because of my mind, my impulsive behaviour, I was like, well, I've lost five, that's not that done. So I'm much clearer and now we're on the route to losing weight. But the perception of people on the internet and putting videos out, I'm certain that a lot of people won't watch is because oh, I'm not listening to that fat git. I'm not listening to him. What's he know? What's that? Look at these. It's a perception of human nature, isn't it? I suppose. Um, and I can't do anything about that. But I will be making videos again um, and support on the weight loss journey. I've said it before, but that's when I was still struggling with stuff. But now I'm fully focused on losing weight and making myself happy, healthier, because I can deal with it now. I can deal with life's hard. It, it, and it, I'll go into me, life has been fucking horrendous the last few months. I mean, horrendous. One of the worst times in my life personally, but luckily I haven't had my gambling addiction and what's happened in the last few months on top, because I'm not sure what would have happened, let's be honest. Um, and there was times, I kind of mentioned it before. Um, wow, this could be hard. I wasn't going to really mention it, but I suppose it's 
to be clear and transparent. I never looked, I never went to, oh Christ. I never actually went to, I started to talk about suicide. So let's talk about that. I Googled it a lot of times. I never went to take my own life. I made that clear because I don't want to be, not clickbait, but I don't want to be like, oh, look, I, I went to do it. I looked to do it. I looked to doing it. Like, I looked to do it. No, I didn't actually, cons you know, wasn't it like the pills were in and I was ready to go. Um, but I definitely Googled it. Because all the pain that was causing other people, I thought the best way is me not being here. I thought that would help. And the only thing that stopped me, which is maybe sad to hear, was my daughter. And I couldn't do it. I looked and looked. But I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I was fucking close to thinking, of, well, I was thinking of doing it. I was close. I was close. But because I couldn't leave my daughter, I didn't do it, or didn't carry on with the thoughts of doing it, but yeah, them thoughts, I, de oh, I Googled it, it entered my head, so, sorry. Yeah, and the last few months I lost my grandma, my gran, which is my mum's mum. And I had a lot of permutations with it, but obviously that's not for this video, but I'm saying that, you know, no no bereavement is easy, is it, in any family? So um, so I struggled, because I'm self-employed, so I struggled with work since then, and then I had an injury in my shoulder, which was because of my psoriasis that I have, which again, that's fun to have. Um, like a calcifisic, like in my, in my tensor, I literally couldn't move my arm more than a certain bit. So I couldn't work for a long time. Well, I say a long time, long enough when you've got no money coming in. I had to pay for, because the NHS, you're going to wait ages for an ultrasound, uh, MRI, and I had to have a steroid injection. So it is loose, it still hurts, but loose enough so I can work. So it's been a horrendous time. That's why there's been also no videos, because I've got, you know, had not much money coming in to produce videos, which is also an issue. Obviously, I know I can make videos without costing much money. I get that, but it's part of the reason, obviously, I've been struggling with a lot of things to produce a video that would be good enough. Um, so the future channel, so we'll get to that, so we get to some <laughs> some light notes. Um, there's a future channel that's going to carry on, nearly on a thousand, which is, you know, I've been crying a lot now, but that will, you know, that might set me over the edge as well. I mean, and then these people go, oh yeah, look at this fantastic 10,000, never thought I'd get here. But honestly, I've never thought I'd get to a thousand people. So that the numbers have been still going up even though there's been no video so i really appreciate that and um because of that reason is the reason to carry on um because people are still subscribing to the channel or not posting videos um i says i've invested reasonably heavy in the channel for someone that's got less than a thousand people um and trying to make the best videos that i can so um kit launch i went there and it was a great video um but the store was only just literally in its infancy. Infancy, it's not even a word, is it? it? Only just started. But now, if you follow Kit Launch on any social media, look at, look, he's, he's got staff now, which he never had it. He's absolutely flying at Kit Launch, and I want to follow that journey because really kind to me. And um, I love going there, and we'll be going again at some point. I'm probably catching a game um, in Barcelona. Um, where in Barcelona, that'll be a secret. There's a few got lined up and we'll go showcase the store again because it's absolutely, it's looking absolutely fantastic. So yeah, videos will continue soon. I don't know when, um, very soon in the next month or so, we'll, we'll chuck something out, match day vlog or something. But end of the year, maybe for Barcelona, we'll see. And yeah, I'd just like to thank everyone for watching. This has been uncut. I haven't done anything to it, just raw as it could be. And I feel like I can close this chapter in my life now. It's an incredibly hard thing to put this on the internet. Um, but I think it's the right time to do it. And the right time for people to, to know 
I suppose, as much as the truth that they can be posted, which is, you know, 99% and the stuff that's always going to be private. Um, but obviously the, the main part is that is on this video. Um, and if anyone else is struggling, um, there's people I never reached out to charities and stuff like that. I think I was a bit proud and so forth. I could sort it out myself. Um, there is obviously people out there to speak to. Um, and I'm happy to speak about it now. And I'd, I'd love to somehow work with a charity and be an ad advocate for it. But coming out the other side, I feel that I've learned a lot from it and reflecting over the last year or so about it and learned more and more why I've done stuff and the effect it has on other people. So I'd be happy to definitely work with some charities on some videos um, or whatever, or whatever that might be. Okay, thank you very much for watching. And um, I'll see you, I'll see you very soon. Over and out.